Welcome to the Travel Plus Loyalty Podcast. We are again ready with our Monday morning update. Some called it the best kept secret in Europe. We call it the Faroe Islands. And today you will learn much more about these islands in the North Atlantic. And in the Faroe Islands, you're never more than five kilometers away from the ocean. So you really uh, uh, get a sense of freedom. We have some people staying here at the moment who have come from other places and they, you know, they've chosen to stay in the Faroe Islands rather than in their home countries because of the the feeling of freedom and uh, the closeness to nature. So that is definitely something that's worth doing. You just heard Guri Holgård, who is the CEO at Visa Faroe Islands. She's the guest in today's Monday morning update. I will talk to her about the Faroe Islands and how it's going currently and if you can visit the islands. Located in the northeast Atlantic, the Faroe Islands comprise of 18 small islands. They are characterized by steep cliffs, tall mountains, narrow fjords, and in total there is a population of 50,000 people. The islands are strategically placed between Europe and North America. The Faroe Islands are only a couple of hours flight from Copenhagen or Central Europe, so it's easy to visit. And whether you are signing up as volunteer to clear trails, or you want to just visit the islands to see the nature, or going on a food tour, the Faroe Islands have it all. Few communities as small as the Faroe Islands can boast on an equally vibrant local art and music scene. A music scene that offers both the bigger concert, but also small home concerts. On the foodie side, the gastronomy has never been more highly thought of as it is now on the Faroe Islands. The guiding star is of course Restaurant Cox, who has one Michelin star. But let's get started, shall we? Today we have uh, Gui Højgaard from uh, Visit Fairy Islands uh, with us in the studio. And uh, Gui, uh, please uh, introduce yourself to our audience. Hello, my name is Gui Højgaard and I'm uh, originally here from the Faroe Islands, uh, though I've been living abroad for most of my adult life, uh, working in tourism and have a background from CBS uh, with marketing and uh, actually moved back to my native islands back in 2012 when I took the position uh, as the CEO of Visit Faroe Islands. Because after working in tourism for many years, I saw the potential in the tourism for the Faroe Islands, uh, which at the time was a very small industry. And, uh, you know, being a, a small country, a small and remote country, with very few industries, mainly uh, fish and, and salmon industries, we um, I, I thought that we needed something more um, and therefore um, decided to, to go into the tourism in the Faroe Islands. And that was at a time when the tourist board was going to be relaunched and um, increased focus even from the political um, priority, um, or, or more political or economic priority uh, was been put into this area so um that was that was then and this is now uh, where it has been increasing for for several years even though we are in the middle of covid 19 now at the of, of course but um otherwise our aim was to double the tourism by 2020 and we would definitely have done that mm. um if it wasn't because of covid and, and that's uh, that's a really good uh, introduction to to our talk today, where we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the situation, uh, what are you doing in in the Faroe Islands, but but also a little bit about what is the main focus these days for for visit Faroe Islands. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, we have two focus focus areas at Visit Faroe Islands. We're both a marketing organization and a development organization, and um, yeah, so we have two. To focus areas and uh, both are equally important and um, when it comes to to marketing we have been focusing really hard in the last few years um, on campaigns efficient campaigns going out through throughout the world being a small um, organization with small resources also forces us to think creatively and outside the box 
And that's what we have done with several different um, campaigns, like the Sheep You campaign, the Fire Islands Translate, Close for Maintenance, uh, and under COVID, we developed a remote tourism. Mm. That's in the, in the marketing field. And in the development field, we launched a development plan uh, back in 2019, just after we, we got the extra money from the government to, to start a development organization. And um, that has really been interesting to, to be a part of that as well. Uh, to put more focus into the internal area here in the Faroe Islands of the internal development. Um, it was hardly needed, actually, because the the increase of tourism came a bit quicker than um, expected, uh, even though we still talk about small figures in, in total. We have around 130,000 uh, tourists a year by now. So, well, just before COVID. So, um, yeah, so we have a lot of things to do there. We have a very fragile nature. We need to take care of it and protect it. So um, so that's what we are focusing on in many different ways. Yeah, and a little bit more about the the, the how many tourists you are getting in and so forth. Uh, you, you said a little bit about the 2019 numbers. How how have uh, 2020 been and, and how do you expect uh, 2021 to be uh, in, in, in that reason? What are your goals uh, to uh, to restart the tourism in, 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 in the Faroe Islands? Yeah, that's a very good question because, uh, yeah, to, to, to begin with the, the 2020 figures, uh, they were, of course, just a very small percentage of what 2019 was. Um, we had around 30 to 40,000 tourists in 2020 compared to 130,000 tourists the, the year before. Um, and 2021 is, is still very difficult to see. Um, it will definitely um, be smaller than the than 19, and but hopefully um, bigger than 20. Um, but it's still too early to see because it, te- it depends so much on the vaccines and, and things like that and how things are opening up again. So it's it's um, it has been very difficult to to put any major goals into you know in the last uh, few year, few months uh, because things are changing all the time and you don't know from week to week what happens. So, but our, our goal is definitely to to just. Um, yeah, to to make a better year than 2020 yeah. at least. Okay, and and you talked a little bit about the, the the things are changing and we are still impacted on on travel rules and so forth. What are the current uh, current rules for traveling to the Faroe Islands from from the Nordics and Europe? Well, actually, you're only allowed to and to to um, to enter the Faroe Islands if you're allowed to enter Denmark. Mm. So that means that we are we don't we're not able to take a lot of visitors at the moment. Um, those who are vaccinated, uh, vaccinated, they can enter without any restrictions, and those who aren't, they will have to go into quarantine for about four days. And the, um, and the, yeah. and the quarantine so, is that a, a strict quarantine like we know it from from other places where you are bound to you are locked into your hotel room, or how is the quarantine in uh, in 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 your case? Well, actually, you 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 can um, stay outside and and you know experience the nature in a way, but it's just that you you're not allowed to to stay close to other people, and that of course gives some limitations regarding restaurants and things like that. And um, the the Faroe Islands is a very small place, so um, of course our infrastructure is small too when it comes to to hospitalized you know technique. So that's why we are very um, eager to to st- to keep a low level of COVID. Mm. We have had um, a, a very successful strategy, actually, um, when it comes to COVID. Um, they have, I think that this is the place that people have tested the most uh, during COVID. Um, hundreds of thousands of tests. Everyone has been tested uh, at the frontier at the entrance to the Faroe Islands and uh, on the first day and then again on the on the sixth day. Uh, so um, therefore we have been able to to keep the numbers uh, very low. I think that it's around 600 people in total that have had COVID and only one person has died actually. That's uh, that's uh, yeah. really uh, that's really good numbers. I must say that, and yeah, and it, it, it really seems like you're 
your your strategy has paid off. What is what is life uh, these days in in the Faroe Islands? Is that like normal, like 2019, or is there any bus restrictions? Are bars, restaurants, are they freely open for for people? Actually, it's almost like 19. Though I think that everyone has learned from from the COVID and are a bit more um, careful uh, about things. But um, things have more or less come back to normal. I think. Well, I think that the uh, the biggest amount of people. Um, uh, it's, it's 500 or something at the moment, I think. Uh, but otherwise, it's, yeah, bars are open, cafes are open, restaurants, etc. So we have been very lucky, I must say. Um, we haven't uh, experienced that much of, of the lockdown, you could say. So that actually brings us into to the possibility to have a, a good summer of of, uh, of this year because the starting point is uh, is really good. Um, so so talk a little bit about campaigns. You you mentioned earlier that you have this virtual uh, campaign where uh, that was quite popular and and you have now uh, just recently launched the the campaign with a thousand free tickets uh, to to ferry or to a plane to to visit uh, the the islands. Can you talk a little bit about the popularity of of of, of the campaigns you've done, and and uh, with with ending it with the last one here uh, that you recently launched? Yeah, well, um, you mentioned the remote tourism one. Uh, that was uh, a big campaign that we launched last year and uh, a year back, um, last April, um, and uh, that was when we um, could conclude that you know the people would not be able to come and visit us. Um, so we decided to to do something for them anyway, those who were supposed to, to be staying with us at that time. Uh, and we wanted to, to give them a taste of the Faroe Islands, uh, but at the same time also give everyone else um, an experience of, of our islands and, a, and a, a sense of freedom, even though they were sitting at home in their sofa or something, locked down and uh, couldn't do very much. So we decided to, uh, you know, our, our colleagues, uh, we decided to to make this program called um, Remote Tourism, where you could actually go into a web page and book a tour with one of our guides, and you could remotely control the guides. And the guides were, they were walking in nature, they were... Yeah, hiking. They were on helicopters. They were on horsebacks, uh, boat trips. Um, you know, a lot of different stuff. Even in inside art museums and whatever. And just a, a way of trying to give everyone a sense of, yeah, a taste of of the Faroe Islands and a sense of freedom um, during COVID. And uh, the good thing was that it, we actually had more visitors. Or actually, seven to six to six or seven times more visitors than we generally have in a whole year during COVID, and so we had seven hundred thousand visits to these tours, and uh, we also got a lot of reactions from abroad. We even got reactions from Italian nurses who wrote to us and said, "Oh, thank you for making my day. I've been I've been working sixty hours this week." And when I come home, I saw this and this just made my my week. <laughs> and uh, from from that to like getting uh, requests from all around the world, from tourist boards, from India, Italy, Greece, um, Canada, everywhere, who wanted to to learn more about this uh, software and uh, and do something similar. And um, but this was just this just was a very it was not like a big system built for it. It was more technically it was we we um, recorded it through YouTube or to our phones, and it was sent out on Facebook and YouTube. So but to, still, to be seen there, yeah. But still, you are a little bit first move on on, on that area, uh, and and quite popular if. if you had so many uh, thousand visits, 700,000 yeah. visitors. That's, uh, that's making yeah. it quite popular. And can you talk a little bit about the popularity of the islands? Because it, it seems with, within your your period of working with uh, developing uh, the, the tourist side and so forth, is it has become more popular over the years. How, uh, how Do we have some examples of, of, of the popularity around the world uh, that you have reached? Yeah, we have seen a 
a huge increase in the interest for the Faroe Islands uh, as a tourist destination. Uh, you know, I'm I'm only one person, and we're a lot. We're a team, and who have been doing this together uh, as a lot of people. Um, and very energetic uh, colleagues and and industry. And uh, well, I I can easily, very easily see that. I, I think the most the reason for it is that you know in this in our globalized world where things or cities are getting more and more alike. You know, you can eat at the same type of restaurants. You can have the same cup of coffee at Starbucks or buy the same Louis Vuitton bags or whatever in almost every city. Um, people were just looking for something new, something unexperienced and something undiscovered. And that's where we come in. Uh, an authentic destination that you, you know, uh, it, it's different from, from everywhere else. So that that's uh, has also been our way of marketing the destination. And if I can, for instance, mention the the interest uh, of our destination today, um, we used to have like forty to fifty journalists a year back in two thousand and eleven, two thousand and twelve. But now, in the last few years, we have had two hundred and fifty each year, and we have actually had to say no to a lot of them. And it's not that it's not only about quantity; it's also about the quality and. We can see that it's actually the biggest media around the world who have been visiting us. It's New York Times, it's CNN, it's Lonely Planet, it's even Vogue, um, all the international big um, media houses in many different countries and so on. And that has given us uh, a great um, uh, vision, you know, um, profile, you could say, or... Uh, yeah, in the international media. So, um, uh, and also that combined together with the the campaigns that we have launched um, that have even, you know, won a lot of international recognition. I think that we have won around 100 awards for our campaigns during these last five years. Uh, we even won four, four um, Golden Lions and can and... Um, you know, a lot of focus on on our work and PR and things like that. So, so you combined, are, yeah. Sorry. No, I was just saying you are on a you are on a good uh, track record uh, currently. It seems. Yeah. Well, um, we were before COVID. Who knows how things will will change uh, after that? But I am actually very confident that our destination will will continue to grow because um, our type of destination. Um, is what people will look even more for in the future. Uh, small places with small groups of people, always close to nature, uh, authentic. And we're also focusing very much on on sustainability in our destination. And uh, that was actually something that we um, got very famous for during our project uh, Closed for Maintenance. I don't know if you've heard about that, mm. but that went all the way throughout the world. Um, the biggest buzzword in tourism today is uh, regenerative travel, that you you don't take from the destination you visit. You just you rather you give something back to it. And the close to maintenance project was a project where we uh, asked 100 volunteers to come and visit the Faroe Islands and to do some work while they were here. They had to work for like two days, and we ended up with a party on the third day or yeah at the end of of the evening and um, we got applications like thousands of applications from all around the world we got a lot of media coverage and uh, we were actually supposed to to repeat it in in 20 by 2020 and all and actually only a few hours after um the um, the story went out uh, that we were going to repeat it in 20, by 2020. We got thousands of applications, not only for 2020, but we even got one uh, uh, 10,000 requests for 2021. And that was like two years ago. Mm. So it's been crazy. And and the thing, the the thing that just to see that people re- people really want to do good, they want to do something positive for the destinations that they're visiting and, and, and things like that. So um, that's, yeah, that's one of the things that we're focusing a lot on. Mm. And um, another of, of our projects that we launched was the, the one that we launched um, 
last week or the, yeah, or the week before, I think it was, uh, on the Danish market only, where we invited uh, 1,000 Danes to come and visit us, um, who were 100 Danes, no, one, sorry, 1,000 Danes who actually were vaccinated. And um, that was, yeah, a, a couple of weeks ago. And it was somehow some kind of kickoff, you could say, to, to try to restart the tourism after this coma uh, that we have had for a long time. And how does this uh, this new campaign go, the, the 1,000? Uh, it's just started and, and there is a limited amount of people in, in, in Denmark that actually are vaccinated and are able to travel, I guess. But, but what is the status of this campaign? Is it also a, a popular one? Um, it actually, well, the tickets were gone after around two days, all these 1,000 tickets, um, uh, which is quite a lot, I think. Um, and become, But we could see a lot of um, health workers who bought the tickets or, or booked the tickets and also some elderly, but mostly, mostly younger people. And um, at least that was some, yeah, it was a kickoff to, to get some... Um, some uh, exposure in, in the Danish press and just to remind the Danes that we are still here and that you can actually travel to us mm. and, um, and get a very um, first-class experience. Yes, it, it, I guess it's a unique point of time to, to visit the island because there are not that many people. So you, you get uh, most of it for yourself, of course, there are the, the local, yeah, local people. Exactly. Well, but it, it's, it's quite the... Uh, I guess it's quite uh, unique uh, to uh, to visit them uh, um, currently on, on that part. Um, so, so a thousand tickets uh, away, uh, mainly to help people and elderly. That's that's good in two days. That's really really good. So, so there are attention out there and, and interest to visit the islands. So, so a little bit about the the development uh, part of it because we have seen that that there is this international interest in in in. Uh, in the Faroe Islands as well, that that uh, we saw the Hilton Garden Inn Hotel uh, open up. So that's the first international brand coming to the Faroe Islands. Mm. What uh, what do you see of development in in that area? Well, actually, and that's also one of the things that um, 2020 was a really really bad year to to get COVID because we were just on the tip to to get the double uh, capacity get double uh, capacity. Uh, when it comes to accommodation, uh, we we both had this new Hilton Hotel, but also other hotels, new hotels, brand new ones, who opened up. And one of them was in July, and another one was rebuilt, so it, it had a lot uh, more uh, hotel rooms. And um, uh, our aim in itself is not to get as many international chains to come and visit, come to to operate here as possible. Um, we, we prefer to have the local uh, ownership of it, and that's also part of the sustainability um, policy to to keep the money local. Um, but of course, we're happy for the for the Hilton Hotel. It's a great hotel with great quality, so and that's really good. And um, uh, yeah, we we can just see a, a very positive development here in the Faroe Islands. And luckily, we still haven't seen a lot of bankrupts, even though it has been. Uh, tough times so i can only hope um, that um, most companies will uh, get out uh, or will see the, the light at the end of the tunnel and survive uh, this horrible year and uh, we can continue from there and so we know that from from other places as well that these international chains like like hilton marriott uh, ihd and so forth they do attract uh, international travelers because they exactly. they are part of yes. that program so so some kind yeah. of balance is there and i, I also have to miss, exactly i i haven't been been visiting the faroe islands but actually had a booking on, on this new hilton garden Inn hotel last year uh, but it was really? yeah it was yeah. delayed and so forth but yeah. so it is on the to-do list but but it was the hotel that actually also was a part of the attraction so but i, I like yeah. i like you saying that you want to have the, the a balance so it's it's localized but but still there is uh, yeah. of course this uh this interest in in to get some some awareness from from outside yeah and, and exactly as, as just as you say hilton is a really good brand to get here because they have their own clients mm. with their own honor uh, clubs and things like that so that's a really good thing yeah. 
so we see that you're also having a, a Michelin star restaurant in, in, in restaurant Cox. And, and, and this is also something that attracts uh, international awareness uh, along with that you have uh, now international hotels. So is it a, a combined effort that you want to, uh, to publish and, and make PR on, on the food and the nature and the international re uh, restaurants and hotels that you have in the Faroe Islands? Yeah, certainly. Um, we have been collaborating very heavily with Cox uh, in, in order to to make the Faroe Islands a food destination. And um, uh, today we have a, a cluster of great restaurants. And that's actually something that people get very surprised of when they come here, that they that the quality of the food is really good, When, when especially when you think about that we are only 50,000 people here. Cox is, is actually absolutely the flagship, but we have several other ones. We have Barbara Fish House, we have uh, Oastor, which is service, which is serving uh, lamb. Uh, we have Katrina Christiansen, who is um, serving uh, fairies tapas, and several other restaurants as well. Uh, so you really need to come and <laughs> and see it by yourself. And that, that's a good thing because uh, on 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 Inside Fly we do have foodie tours actually arranged. Uh, we have been in New York, yeah, we really? have been to New York, yeah. we have been to uh, to uh, to Hong Kong. We have planned a, tr a trip to to Singapore. Uh, uh, end of this year, but we actually also have the the, the Fair Islands on the to do list. So uh, now you're mentioning it, that is definitely something that we should look more into, uh, trying to arrange a, a little foodie tour to uh, to those uh, to those look good restaurants up there. So you should really do that. And that is something that I'm you know I'm really proud to yeah. present. You know the food scene here in the Fair Islands, and um, it is a, it's a must. Um, you can actually read more about it in the the Dansk Spice yeah. Guide as yeah. well. And in the white guide, uh, where several of them are are um, added as well, and yeah, you can actually eat at great restaurants every night while you're here if you're staying for a oh, whole week. That's uh, at yeah, least. <laughs> that's uh, that, that's good to know. Um, a little yeah. bit about the the rest of twenty one uh, event wise and and campaign wise. Do you, do we have something in in the pipeline for for the uh, for for after the summer vacation for 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 this for the autumn? Uh, we are still in the primary processes of um, uh, planning the rest of the year when it comes to campaigns. Um, we don't really know yet what to when when to uh, launch uh, the next campaign but we will see eventually but uh, there's for sure that there's something is uh, is coming and we have to be uh, aware of that and, and looking <laughs> what you what you're coming out with but but again it, it i think you have a good again as i mentioned earlier a good track record in in events and making uh, making aware of yourself uh, as a as a easy go to destination with with short travel times and and again good accommodation good restaurants good nature uh, and and uh, and being let's say close to uh, close to nature, so so the ending uh, question, uh, Gui, on on this part is uh, if we're going to visit the Faroe Islands on an extended weekend or a little bit longer for a week, what is the the five things that you should see when you come to the or should experience when you come to the Faroe Islands? Oh, that's a very good question and a very difficult one to answer. But only five things. Uh, well, I, we just mentioned the food. That is definitely one of them. Um, uh, another one is um, is knitting, you know, that you can buy a lot of stuff. But, uh, mostly women here have been, been knitting. Uh, we have several companies, actually. Uh, and the nature, of course, uh, which is uh, really very beautiful and original uh, a lot of small villages throughout the country uh, i could mention uh, a small one called chotnovuk or uh, jek is another one with a natural harbor where you can buy the best pancakes and um well, how many did they mention? I think you know, three, <laughs> I three or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Three or four, yeah. And then uh, I think that um, we have a, um, a lithographic um, uh, workshop uh, here in the, in the capital called Steinprint, where they sell local art. Mm. That is a beautiful one. I, I love to get to go there and get inspired by the great guys working there. And also we have uh, a small island called uh, Nölfsoy, right outside the capital. 
uh, which has uh, several places to experience, both the nature and cafes and really great people uh, who live there. And it's only like uh, 15 minutes boat ride from, from the capital. So there you get to experience both the capital and also the outside, both uh, islands and, and things like that. And oh, by the way, I, I need to mention the uh, subsea tunnel as well. Uh, that was just inaugurated uh, a few months ago, uh, which actually contains the first ever roundabout uh, above the ocean. And it's really beautiful as well. You need to yeah, see it's that. Actually, it's, I would say it's not only a, a roundabout uh, below uh, ocean uh, floor. It's 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 a uh, architecture. It's a uh, it's it's a uh, yeah, it's culture. It's it, paint. It's light. It's it's everything when you see the pictures yeah, of it. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's our local uh, artist Trander Patterson, who also has won a lot of international recognition, who actually uh, designed this um, art piece. Uh, really beautiful. Yeah, I won't okay. tell you more about it. You need exactly. to see. I think it's one of the roundabouts <laughs> in the world that you actually will do several tours and just going round and round and round and round. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, not, not get, get out, out of it, it for, yeah. for for the it's... next couple of minutes. <laughs> oh, that was that was definitely more exactly. than five things on 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 that part. And I can I can I can hear that it there is a lot to do both on on, on an extended weekend visiting, but also a week long vacation. Uh, so uh, there is a lot of opportunities yeah. to, uh, to to visit. Yes, and and actually, sorry, I need to, to mention one more as well and that is um, home concerts because in Faroe Islands is very much about music, music as well and in the village of Goethe they have a lot of home um, concerts um, and that is something that is you know the opposite of a Bruce Springsteen yeah. concert in a big arena it's uh, in someone's home like in, in the yeah and where you sit and, and um, enjoy um, great local artists who have a lot of international potential and some of them are also very well known abroad as well. There was plenty. There's That's plenty something. of uh, opportunities. I can. Say. It's you know, <laughs> be difficult just to be there for two or three days. Uh, that, exactly. Uh, you need to come and yeah, experience it. <laughs> but that uh, that concludes uh, our our talk today, uh, Gui. And uh, thank you very much for joining in and and telling what the status is, what your possibilities is, and 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 how you're doing in in the Faroe Islands. It seems like you are getting a lot of popularity, uh, and uh, we need to be first movers come visiting you before you're getting. To, uh, a lot of yeah. tourists coming in again so uh, <laughs> you should definitely yeah. do that thank you very much for today and uh, we'll talk a little bit later when we uh, have new things to, to cover from the Fair Islands thank you so much and have a nice day as well thank you That is the end of our talk with uh, Gui Højgaard from Visit Fairy Islands, and we thank her for telling us all about what's going on on the Fairy Islands currently and how we can come visit them. We from the Travel Plus Loyalty podcast team wish you a very good day, and if you do travel, then we wish you a safe travel. If you like what you've heard, please follow us on the Travel Plus Loyalty podcast, and also, it would be helpful if you would share this episode with your friends and colleagues.